Hey everyone, today I'm going to compare and analyze the difference between a genuine Keegan carburetor and an off-brand one for a Honda CRF or XR100-80. On the right here we have the genuine, and on the left is the knockoff copy. I recently did a few shorts comparing Makuni off-brands to the genuine counterparts with VM36s, and the results there were really interesting, and you should check out those shorts if you're curious to see what the internals of those look compared. This one, I'm going to go a little more in-depth, show all the differences, and do some test runs with the genuine, the off-brand brand and then switching all the internals between the two just to see if it's the body or the jets that make the difference if there is a difference to be made. So stick around to the end and we'll see if this $18 Amazon carb is worth the savings. Okay, so I'm gonna break these down here in a second, but first I wanted to show you some of the differences on the outside between the knockoff and the name brand. The first of the two main things to show you are the idle screws here are pretty different. If you look at the knockoff here, it's pretty exposed and there's not much of a casting and there's no O-ring to keep air from leaking around the threads there. But on the genuine, you'll see it's got a sleeve here that it threads into and inside is an O-ring. So I would say that's one big weakness of the cheaper aftermarket carb, it's just not as well thought out. And then the other main difference you can tell between the two is that the name brand one has Keek in Japan cast into the top of the slide. It also, the off brand says a PZ26, but the genuine has PD and actual serial numbers. Okay, so now I'm gonna tear these things apart and we're gonna break down each component and see how they compare. If you wanna see the process of how I break these down, you can check this video out real quick. But here, I'll just jump right to it. Okay, so I know this looks like a lot to compare, but we'll get through it as fast as possible. The first thing I wanna point out is that the knockoff carburetor doesn't have a main jet ring or baffle. Over here, you see this little plastic thing sits on the main jet and helps keep from fuel surges or starvation during rough riding conditions, and the knockoff is missing it, so something to consider. Okay, so now we'll look at the needles, and they're actually really different. Uh, the knockoff has a significantly fatter taper, which would make it a much leaner needle. So we'll see if that affects how it runs. The other problem is that it doesn't have any markings on it. Next up, we got the floats, which really look very similar in shape and design. Obviously, the plastic is different, and I can't speak to the longevity of the white plastic, but the structure seems similar. I think it would work quite well as long as that white plastic holds up. I've never really had problems with these original ones, so I can't complain about them or like have any reason to replace them unless they just broke for some reason. So next up are these slides, which really, they're like the most similar parts of anything here. I can tell they're different because of the castings and the idle control taper is a little different, but functionally, these should be pretty similar. Now as for these float needles, they're really important and the only thing I'd really worry about on the aftermarket one is the tip holding up to ethanol gas and being centered so that it seals well. So we'll find that out first thing whenever we put gas in it. Next we've got these needle jets or emulsion tubes and they're pretty different also on the two of them. You'll see the original has bigger bleed holes on the side and also they go up further. But at the same time, these differences might interact well with the different needle tapers. So I can't say that it's gonna be like worse because of this. We'll just have to put them in and see which one runs better. You can see here the main jet is definitely bigger than the aftermarket one. So that's something we'll have to consider. Thankfully, this whole needle jet interchanges between the two. So we'll be able to test them out in both bodies. Okay, next up we got the air fuel screws. The springs are effectively the same, and the actual bodies of these are pretty similar too. There's a slight difference in the length of the needle taper at the end of the knockoff one, but I think functionally these should be pretty comparable. Okay, now we're looking at the pilot jets here, and while there are some slight differences to the bleed hole sizes and where the main hole is uh, through the body of it, I think they're functionally gonna be pretty similar too. The biggest downside I see is that the aftermarket or off-brand one doesn't have any branding. So like most of the parts in it, you won't know which size to go up and down if you needed to do any jetting. Now with these float bowl gaskets, my biggest concern was the longevity of the knockoff that it might swell or um, become brittle or, or crack quickly once exposed to gas. But uh, I've taken it on and off a couple times now and I can say, it actually holds up really well, so that's nice. Now the float blows themselves are really similar. For some reason, there's a big difference that you'll see the drain holes here are in the opposite direction. But other than that, functionally, I think these are pretty much comparable. Slide springs, same thing. As for the rest of the body, aside from what I pointed out before as being different, these things are really similar. The chokes actuate the exact same and structurally they just seem um, very comparable. I got my calipers out just to compare the inlets and see if they were actually the exact same size. And sure enough, the original one is right at 26 millimeters or 25.95 millimeters. Um, but the aftermarket or the knockoff one was just a little bit smaller at about 25.86. 
millimeters, but that really shouldn't make much of a noticeable difference. So I'm gonna throw the original one on the bike first, then I'll come back, swap them out, and see how they compare. Okay, so after warming up the bike and giving it some test runs in the backyard and on the street, I wanted to pull the spark plug and have a look at that just to get a baseline. Um, it looks pretty good, it's a little bit dark, but really this is a totally acceptable color for the plug. And then real quick, I just wanted to make a little addendum to my older video about uh, working on this bike and this carb. Um, it's actually really easy to take the carb off. You can just pull that intake flange back and pull the carb right off without moving the airbox back or taking any of the um, tank or plastics off. Okay, now with the new carb on, I'm gonna dial that in and take it for some test runs. Okay, so just like the first carb, when I pulled this one in, I took the spark plug out, and interestingly, it's a lot lighter with the aftermarket carb. And there's a few reasons for this. If you remember, the main jet on the aftermarket one was a little bit smaller, so that could be contributing to it on the wide open. And then also the needle was fatter on this, so it is a leaner needle. Basically, throughout the range, this should be a little bit leaner carb. Okay, so after I did the initial runs with both carbs, I actually took all of the internals out of each carb and swapped them with each other, and then did another two runs with the aftermarket carb using all the stock components and vice versa. Uh, just so that I could kind of get an idea of what exactly was influencing different aspects of running. And I ran into an issue where on the aftermarket carb with its original parts and then also with the actual genuine Keegan parts, it was having a bit of a sputter and a little bit of a struggle in the mid range through high end. And so uh, at first I was thinking it was the jetting, but swapping the parts didn't change it. So I looked a little closer when I was installing it and I noticed that this little brass plug here was uh, actually protruding a little bit too far out of the flange and causing the o-ring not to quite seal, creating an air leak, and I think that was the problem. So I filed that down a little bit, and that actually solved the issue that I was having with that one. And you can see here on the stock one, uh, there's actually a recess for that same plug so that it doesn't actually interfere and cause this problem. And then there was one other thing that I noticed other than the idle screws is that I didn't really love the threading on the uh, aftermarket one for the top plate. Um, it was just a little bit looser, and it didn't feel like it was biting as hard, like the threads weren't cut quite as nicely. But other than that, once I filed down that brass plug a little bit, I couldn't tell the difference in how these ran, um, no matter which jets I put in which carb body. And I was really impressed with it overall. I gotta say, there's no reason why um, I wouldn't be running this aftermarket carb on this bike. So there we have it, that's my conclusion on this. Basically, you can run these carbs and the things I can't speak to is quality control, quality assurance. You know, you might get one and it's great and then you might get another and it has some issues with it. And that's one of the issues you're gonna have with aftermarket stuff. Uh, in these cases, these knockoff carburetors, they just, they aren't built up to the same standard as a genuine, but as long as you can replace all of the brass parts like you can on this one, and now having determined that the body itself really does function quite all the same, it seems like a great deal to save a lot of money and run this aftermarket kick and carb. Now I can't say the same for the Makunis, um, at least the one that I got was a terrible aftermarket. You couldn't replace the jets and I would never recommend that one. But uh, I've got another knockoff carburetor coming for a Honda Ruckus here in a couple days so I might do a short on that too just to see how they compare. So I hope somebody found this video helpful. If you did, leave me a comment with your carb experiences and uh, I I'm really curious to hear what people think about these aftermarket carbs. Which ones have you had good luck with? Which ones have sucked and you regretted buying? I really want to help create a better understanding to help people save money when they can but then not waste their money on poor quality parts. Anyway, Anyway, thanks for watching.